Sup all, JC3 here, the baller of YouTube in general. Welcome to Topic Tackle. My take for today is on Adidas' tragic history of losing NBA stars to Nike. I'll be focusing in on the rookies that chose checks over stripes and turned out to be generational stars and also on Zion, who just signed with the Nike subsidiary Jordan brand after much speculation. This is Topic Tackle. Let's go. We begin to see Adidas' missteps in the basketball sneaker world take place in 1984 with Michael Jordan. Fresh out of North Carolina, MJ wanted a sponsorship deal with Adidas, according to the Wall Street Journal. Adidas distributors reportedly wanted to sign Jordan, according to one distributor at the time, but German executives declined to sign him in favor of taller players. They believed that shoppers favored taller players and with Kareem already on board, they wanted to continue this trend. A certain Adidas distributor at the time had loud remarks for the execs. We kept saying, no. No one can relate to those guys. Who can associate with a seven foot tall guy? Of course, the logic has completely reversed since 1984 and dynamic guards are the priority for every major athletic company that produces shoes. Michael Jordan probably had a lot to do with that as his sneaker line with Nike became a brand of its own and is still the most iconic line of signature shoes in basketball history. Sports marketing executive Sonny Vaccaro for Nike was key in landing MJ with the swoosh. So Adidas, take the L on this one. It's 12 years later, 1996, and Adidas has a chance to redeem themselves for failing to sign MJ. Fresh out of Lower Marion High School is guard Kobe Bryant, a 17-year-old kid who possesses skills way beyond his years. He really didn't want to be drafted by the New Jersey Nets, so who stepped in to help him? That's right, this dude again, Sonny Vaccaro, who was now working for Adidas. He's the one who spread rumors that Bryant would play in Italy if the Nets took him. In large part due to his efforts, Kobe inked a six-year, $48 million deal with Adidas. Only thing is, Bryant didn't make it to the sixth year of his contract because, well, basically, he hated his signature shoes. I mean, look at these things. So disrespectful. That's not a thing. Kobe even paid his way out of the deal, and thus Adidas took another L. For more on this story, you can check out the full video I did. Link is in the description. Make sure to click on that after the video. Okay, so 2003 was a really rough year for Adidas. First of all, you got this man Kobe running around as a sneaker free agent after buying his way out of his Adidas contract, and now you got the LeBron situation, which was another failed signing. Dang, man. Cue that Jordan soundbite. Stop it. Get some help. Sonny Vaccaro does his thing again, establishing a close relationship with the James family throughout LeBron's high school years while watching the next prodigy dominate while wearing Adidas. After getting the approval from upper management, Vaccaro promised James that Adidas would offer him a 10-year, $100 million contract, and things were set. Except, when the day of the signing came, Vaccaro realized that management had altered the terms of the contract. Instead of $10 million a year for 10 years, the numbers came out to be $7 million a year for 10 years with incentives. Nike then swooped in and signed James to a 7-year, $90 million deal with incentives, and the rest is history. Adidas takes another L yet again. For more on the story, you can check out the video I did, link is in the description. Although not a proven star yet, the Zion loss has got to hurt Adidas considering the history they have together. All throughout his high school years at Spartanburg Day, Zion rocked nothing but Adidas. He played in the Adidas Gauntlet during AAU, okay, he brought a ton of notoriety to the brand. Then he went to a Nike school in Duke. But wait, then his PG 2.5 shoe blew out on court, leading to an injury that kept him out until the ACC tournament. All right, at the time, a lot of people said that Nike was done, they had no chance to sign Zion, but we didn't see what was going on behind the scenes. According to a Soul Collector article, Nike reportedly sent a team of specialists down to Durham, North Carolina to meet with Williamson the day after the mishap. Per Sports Illustrated's Jonathan Jones, Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski said that Nike flew its top people to Duke where they analyzed Zion's game and the way shoes performed under his 280 plus pound frame. They then took the findings to China where they oversaw the manufacturing of a more resilient and stable sneaker and a week later, they returned to Duke with a custom Kyrie 4. After wearing them during the first game of the ACC tournament, Williamson Simpson said, 
The shoes were incredible this game. And I just know they're a little stronger than the regular Kyrie 4s, so I want to thank Nike for making these. But yeah, they felt very comfortable. Zion chose to go the Jordan route, signing the richest rookie shoe deal in NBA history at five years, $75 million. It's not the 100 plus million deal that I speculated in my video on which shoe brand Zion could sign with. Again, the link is in the description for that. But still, Zion got the largest rookie deal, which I believed would happen. At this point, we don't know how or if Adidas made their pitch to Zion, but even without this information, it seems like they blew another chance by failing to capitalize on being with him during his high school days. So, yet another L for Adidas. Especially when Zion got the largest rookie shoe deal in history, and there's still a tweet like this. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Should Zion have signed with another sneaker brand? And if so, who? Remember to subscribe, like, leave your feedback in those comments down below. We'll be back with more Topic Tackle coming soon. JC3, out.